Hello, dear student. Welcome to another lecture in quantum mechanics. This is lecture number six in quantum mechanics. So far, we have learned about the failures of classical mechanics, which led to the evolution of quantum mechanics. We have learned about black body radiation spectrum. We have also learned about wave function and its importance. We have learned how to analyze the evolution of a wave function using the Schrodinger's time independent and time dependent wave equations. In this video, we will learn about particle in a box. We will learn how a particle will behave in an infinite square well potential. We will learn about its energy eigenvalues, the normalization condition, the probability density, the energy quantization and zero point energy. Also particle in a three dimensional box and also the discrete energy levels offered by the three dimensional box. Now, what is an infinite squareable potential? Infinite squareable potential is a well which is surrounded by potentials which are infinite of values. That is, we have a well which is between 0 and L denoted by here and it is surrounded by a potential, surrounded by potentials which is of the infinite values. That is, any particle which is trapped inside here have zero possibility to cross to here this region or this region. These two regions have infinite potentials and the potential inside this well is zero. This uh, well is called an infinite square well potential. This is a one dimensional potential. That is, this has only one dimension that is in x direction and the length of the potential is L and it's marked at 0 and L. At 0 and L, the value of the potential, the potential becomes infinite and between 0 and L, the potential is 0. Now, let us analyze how do a particle behave in an infinite squareable potential. We have already said that the Schrodinger wave equation determines how a particle behaves, how a microscopic particle behaves. As it is in uh, notion with uh, how the Newtonian uh, equations, the Newton's equations of motion regulate uh, the dynamics of a body in a classical system, the Schrodinger's wave equation tells us how the body will behave in a quantum system. So to analyze how a, a microscopic body, maybe an electron or a proton, will behave in this quantum well, we need to analyze the Schrodinger's wave equation. Here we are analyzing the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. The Schrodinger's time independent wave equation is given by del square psi plus 2m by h cross square into E minus V psi is equal to 0, where E is the energy of the particle, V is the uh, potential of the potential well, and del square is the Laplacian operator given by dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square. We have seen this in our previous video. So here, our potential well is just in x direction. So we can rewrite, we can replace this del square operator by just d square by dx square because this is not a three dimensional potential. Our del square will change to d square by dx square. So in di one dimension, we can write, rewrite this equation as d square by dx square psi plus 2m by h cross square into e minus v psi is equal to 0. But again, 
we know that the potential inside the potential well that is potential inside in which the particle is trapped is zero it has a value zero therefore we can substitute v is equal to zero and our equation will become d square psi by dx square is equal to 2me by h cross square psi is equal to zero do this equation look familiar to you I hope in mathematics you have learned how to solve a second order differential equation. This is a second order differential equation of the form d square y by dx square plus some constant k y is equal to 0. This is of this form d square y by dx square plus k y is equal to 0. How can you solve this mathematically? In mathematics, we have learned how to solve a second order differential equation. What will you do? You will substitute d square by dx square as d capital D square. And if you had a term dy by dx, then you are going to substitute uh, d instead of d square. So here the solution will go like this d square plus k is equal to 0 and here d square will be equal to minus k and therefore the d will be equal to plus or minus i root k. Hope you got the equation why we have a i here because we had a negative sign here this is plus or minus i root k therefore the roots of this equation roots of this equation d square by dk square the roots its roots will be what all are its roots its roots are plus i k and minus i k right so these roots are of the form alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta right where alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to k these roots are of the form alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta that is these roots are complex conjugate of each other in that case, how are we going to write the solution of this equation? In mathematics, we have already learned how to write the solution of the equation, solution of a second order differential equation, if its uh, uh, roots turns out to be the complex conjugate of each other. How can we write the equation? How can we write the equation as y is equal to, the solution of y will be equal to, e raised to alpha x into some constant a into sine beta x plus some other constant b into cos beta x. This is the solution of such a equation. Here alpha is 0. From this equation, alpha is 0 and beta is k. Therefore, our answer will be, in this case, our answer will be equal to psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx. This is a form. This is a form. What we have here is alpha is equal to 0. This alpha will become 0. And A will stand instead of beta, we can substitute K. And instead of beta, we have substituted K. And our answer is, and so our wave equation is A sine Kx plus B cos Ks mathematically. Mathematically, our wave equation should be of this form. That is, it should be a wave in nature. Cos and sines are wave in nature, right? So, uh, the particle behaves like a wave inside this potential well, maybe as a cos wave or as a sine wave or as a combination of a cos wave and a sine wave. 
This is what this equation tells us mathematically. Now, let us uh, introduce some boundary conditions that we already have and analyze how this wave actually behaves. Our first boundary condition is that the wave psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to infinity. At x is equal to 0. At x is equal to 0, what happens is that uh, beyond x is equal to 0, what we have is an infinite potential. Therefore, there is no possibility for the particle inside this well to jump into uh, the infinite potential barrier. Therefore, there is no possibility of finding the particle here. Therefore, there will be no possibility of finding its wave also. That is, at x is equal to 0, this wave, the wave equation of the particle inside this box will come to 0. That is, psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0. Now, what is psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to infinity? We have already said, and this is what we have already said in the properties of a wave functions. We have already learned the properties of the wave function in one of our videos. In that, videos, uh, that video, we have said that the wave function should be bound. It should be bound, that it should vanish at infinity. Therefore, psi should be equal to 0 when x turns to minus infinity or plus infinity. Here we are using this first boundary condition, psi is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. We have our equation psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx. So, uh, let us substitute 0, this boundary condition. Therefore, psi is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. So, I am putting 0 for psi. Let me do this. I am putting 0 for psi is equal to a sin k into instead of x, I have to write 0 plus b cos k instead of x, I have to write 0. Now, what is sin 0? Sin k into 0 is 0. So, what is sin 0? Sin 0 is 0 that we already know. Therefore, this term will come out to be 0 is equal to b into what is cos 0? Cos 0 is 1. Therefore, this implies that b is equal to 0. This b is equal to 0. Therefore, in this term, b cancels out to be 0 using our first wave equation. What does this physically tell us? We already have two waves, right? A sine wave and a cos wave. Uh, so, what it, this tells us is uh, before cancelling out the zero, this can be a combination of a sine wave. This is a sine wave and either a sine wave or a cos wave. How do a cos wave behave? This is a function. This is a cos function and this is a sine function. So, among these two, which function cancels out at x is equal to 0. Only sine function cancels out at x is equal to 0. Therefore, psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 is only holded by the sine function and cos function doesn't behave so. Therefore, we have to cancel out our cos function. Therefore, the uh, cos function is removed and now the equation is just psi is equal to a sin kx. Now let's look into our next boundary condition. Our next boundary condition is psi of L is equal to 0. Again we have an infinite barrier here and there is no possibility for the particle to jump to this barrier. Therefore its wave function inside this region will also be 0. Therefore the wave function should va vanish at uh, x is equal to L also. Therefore, we already have a wave function as psi is equal to 
a sin kx. This is a wave function after uh, using a first boundary condition. Now, uh, the second boundary condition says psi is again 0 when k is equal to L. Therefore, substitute 0 is equal to a sin k L. Instead of x, I have to substitute L. Therefore, 0 is equal to a sin k L. Now, what a cannot be equal to 0. If a equal to 0, then the entire term will go to 0 at every point that we doesn't need. So, a cannot be equal to 0. a is a constant. Therefore, what will go to 0 is this sign term. So, let us analyze at what conditions will sign go to 0. We know that sign uh, will give a value 0 for sin th if sin theta is equal to 0 then theta should be equal to integer multiples of pi where n is equal to 1 uh, maybe 0 1 2 3 etc for integer multiples of pi uh, uh, sin goes to 0 Therefore, from this equation, if this equation have to be true, then KL should be equal to n pi where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. Therefore, we can write K is equal to n pi by L. From this I can write k is equal to n pi by l. Therefore, over here, instead of k, I can substitute n pi by l. Therefore, my final wave equation will become some constant into sine n pi x by l. See, I already had an x here, so it will be n pi x by L. Now, let us look into, so far we have learned what will be the eigenfunction of this equation. This, uh, that is a wave function itself is an eigenfunction of the energy, Hamiltonian. We have already learned about eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. We have said that if I can write an equation h psi is equal to e psi, then psi is the eigenfunction of the operator h and e is the eigenvalue. In the first Schrodinger equation, we have already done this, that we had written uh, some operator in terms of psi is equal to e psi. We can write uh, the wave equation in this format. Therefore, the wave function itself is the eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian and we should have an eigenvalue for every eigenfunction. So, let us find the energy eigenvalue. The eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian is an energy eigenvalue. So, let's Calculate this energy eigenvalue. From our first equation, hope you remember our first equation was d square psi by dx square plus 2n. This was our uh, Schrodinger equation. h cross square psi is equal to 0. This was our Schrodinger equation. So, here we have substituted this function as k square. Remember, we have substituted this as k square. Therefore, I can write 2me by h cross square as k square. So, this term will go and I can write k square here. So, 2me by h cross square is k square. From this only we have written our equation for psi. Hope you remember. 
and uh, from the previous the, from the latest step we have calculated k should be equal to n pi by l using boundary conditions so why not we use this and calculate our energy eigenvalue that is let us introduce instead of k uh, and just a square and equate to this and squaring this k term that is n square pi square by l square and squaring the whole k term and equating it to the value of k square here that is 2m e by h cross square and let's find an equation for e let's rearrange this this h cross square will go to the numerator and 2m will come to the denominator therefore i can write e is equal to this e is equal to h cross square will come over here as n square pi square h cross square divided by i already have an l square here and my 2m will come over here and the energy eigenvalue the energy eigenvalue is equal to n square pi square h cross square divided by 2m a square now what will be the energy at n is equal to 1 n equal to 1 is a ground state n equal to 1 is a ground that is the minimum energy which the particle ha can have therefore the minimum energy level is called the ground level and the energy at the minimum energy level energy at the ground level is called the zero point energy that is when n is equal to 1 n is at n is equal to 1 energy e is equal to pi square h cross square divided by 2 m l square that is at ground energy the energy is not equal to 0 at ground energy level the energy of the particle is not equal to 0 the particle holds a minimum energy at the ground state and this energy is known as the zero point energy zero point energy is the energy of the particle at the ground state again this energy is quantized that is at n is equal to 1 my energy was pi square h cross square by 2 m l square this is when n is equal to 1 that is e1 now what will be at n is equal to 2 e2 e2 will be equal to 4 times pi square h cross square by 2 m l square right that is pi square h cross square by 2 m l square can be written as e1 also so e2 will be 4 times e1 again what will be e3 that is when n is equal to 3 n is equal to 3 my n square turned out to be 9 so it will be 9 e1 that is all the energy levels are not possible only the energy levels equal to 1 e1 4 e1 9 e1 again for 16 e1 are the only possible energy levels that is particle can exist at these energy levels it's fine for the particle can exist at these energy levels and it cannot occupy any level which is between these regions these regions are completely forbidden the particle cannot take any energy value maybe like 8 e1 or 5 e1 is not possible the particle can take only quantized energy levels which is determined by the energy eigenvalues therefore the energy in a uh, square well potential is quantized the particle can have only definite values of energy and it cannot take any values as per need it just 
can take only those energy values which are specified by this energy eigenvalues. Now, let us find the normalization condition. We already have a wave equation psi here. What was a wave equation psi? It was some constant A into sin n pi x by L. Now this is our wave equation. That is our uh, wave equation it behaves as a sine wave. Now let us find this constant. We uh, multiplied it with the constant A. So now let us find A, this constant A using normalization condition. What is normalization condition? That is integral minus infinity to infinity psi star psi dv uh, should be equal to 1 and this is our normalization condition that is when a wave is normalized. This is a condition that we have already learned when we learned about wave equations. We have said that the wave functions have to be bound that is Inside the entire universe, the probability of finding a particle have to be equal to 1. Probability equal to 1 means I have a 100% possibility to find that particle. So, from minus infinity to infinity, psi star psi gives us the probability. Therefore, what this equation telling us, from minus infinity to infinity, uh, the probability of finding a particle inside a volume D2 is equal to 1. That just means that a particle exists completely in the universe and this is a necessary condition. We have learned about this in our wave function that this normalization condition that is the probability from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1 is a necessary condition. This means that particle exists 100% inside this boundary minus infinity to infinity. So let's uh, apply this boundary condition to our psi. Here psi star is a complex conjugate of the wave function. Here since we doesn't have any complex values here, our complex conjugate psi will be equal to our psi itself. Therefore, our complex conjugate and our uh, real uh, are the same. Therefore, psi star and psi are same for our wave function. So, let us try to calculate this. On applying this, so what we have here is integral minus infinity to infinity but we know that we already know that uh, finding a particle inside the barrier uh, inside this barrier a particle exists only from 0 to l and not from minus infinity to infinity this we already know so we can reduce the limit from minus infinity to 0 and infinity to L because we know that our particle, our wave equation exists only in this region. Therefore, I can write integral instead of minus infinity to infinity, I can change the limits from 0 to L and psi star and psi are equal. Therefore, squaring the psi will be okay. Therefore, A square sine square n pi x by l and dv dv is equal to dx plus dy sorry dx dy dz that is when the function was in three dimension then uh, dv is the small volume that is dx into dy into dz here our function exists only in one dimension. Therefore, dv can be rewritten as dx itself because it, is, it exists only in one dimension. So, let's solve it. a square is a constant. It comes out. And 0 to l. 
Now, how can we write sin theta? Sin square theta. Sin square theta can be written as Sin square theta uh, can be written as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. This can be written in this form. Therefore, we can re rewrite this sin square. Here theta is n by x by l in the form as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. And let's see what will happen. So, we already have a 2 here. So, I am taking out 2 to here. And here it is 1 minus cos 2n pi x by L the whole into dx. So, it is 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 that 2 was taken outside. So now let's integrate this. Taking all the constants to be normal and this function have to be equal to 1. This is a normalization condition. So let's take it over. a square by 2. Now uh, what all do we have here? Integral 0 to L. 1 into dx that is just dx minus integral 0 to L cos 2n pi x by L dx. Now a square by 2 what is integral dx? Just x and substituting and uh, this will have a value x between the limit 0 and L. Therefore, the answer for this integral 0 to L dx is just L, right? The upper limit L minus lower limit 0, that is L. Minus, what is integral 0 to L cos 2n pi x by L? Let's try to calculate this. What will be integral 0 to L cos 2n pi x by L dx. Integral cos is sine minus sine minus uh, sine 2n pi x by L into differential of that. this from 0 to L and its differential that is L by 2n pi. Now let's apply the limits when uh, using the upper limit when x is equal to L. When x is equal to L what will happen? The equation will become sine 2n pi right minus the lower limit x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0 it will become sine 0. Right? Now sine 2 and pi. Sine 2 pi is 0. We already know that sine 2 pi is 0. Again when I multiply uh, uh, and again sine 3 pi or sine 6 pi sin 4 pi everything is 0. So sin 2 pi 2 and pi is 0. Again sin 0 is 0. And our answer here this term. This entire term cancels out to be 0. And this is our answer is equal to 1. That is a square We have a square is equal to a square l by 2 is equal to 1 
this is our equation a square l by 2 is equal to 1 therefore a square will be equal to 2 by l and a will be equal to root over 2 by l so this is our constant a therefore we can rewrite this equation as therefore the eigen function of our hamiltonian will become just substitute for a and psi will be equal to uh, root over 2 by l sin n pi x by l so this is the eigen function this is the wave function of the equation wave function of the particle and wave function here is the eigen function of the hamiltonian therefore both are same and psi is equal to root over 2 by l sin n pi x by l now let us analyze how does this wave function look like what we have is a wave function psi is equal to root over 2 by l which is just a constant sin n pi x by l this is our wave function so this is basically a sine function multiplied by some constant therefore the wave will look like entirely like a sine function this will be the form the geometrical representation of this function and where the theta instead of theta we have here is 2 pi x by l and this wave moves in x direction this is the x direction so our wave function will actually look like a sine function and it varies as n varies for n is equal to 1 we have psi 1 that will be equal to root over 2 by l just sine pi x by l and for n is equal to 2 we have psi 2 that is equal to root over 2 by l sine 2 pi x by l therefore what varies is just uh, the theta the value of theta of psi as the value of theta varies the frequency of the wave varies therefore for psi 1 energy e1 for energy e that e is equal to e1 we have a wave function like this this is a ground wave function and this wave function is our psi 1 so a ground wave function looks like the half sine wave and uh, see in every portion it cancels out at x is equal to 0 for every wave it cancels out at x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to l this was a boundary condition it cancels out at x is equal to 0 and it becomes at x uh, 0 at x is equal to l just inside that region for every eigen energy values the psi function uh, our wave function will behave with a different frequency but as the same sine function with a different frequency as the energy increases the frequency increases so for e our ground state this is our psi function psi is equal to 1 and this figure this figure denotes here how the psi is going to behave that is how the particle this is our actually this is a particle so this is a particle the particle wave function is going to behave when the particle has just the ground state energy when the particle has energy equal to ground state energy then the wave function will be like this now what is n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 will give you an energy n square e1 that we have already seen is 4 e1 so at 4 e1 it has behaved as a sine wave function with one 
note over here that the frequency has increased so it will behave as this figure the wave function will behave wave function will oscillate as this when the particle have an energy equal to 4 e that is when the particle is in its first excited state this 4 e state is known as its first excited state its wave function will behave like this similarly when it is at the second excited state it has an energy eigenvalue e is equal to a 9 e uh, and it have two nodes and the wave behaves like this and for 16 e it uh, will behave like this and uh, for the next step that is 5 square 25 e it will behave like this so this is the way in which the wave uh, the particle uh, behaves but the particle wave function behaves when it has a ground state energy e or it has an excited state energy 4 e 9 e 16 e and so on these are the ways in which the particle wave function that is again the eigenfunction of the hamiltonian behaves for different energy levels now let us learn about probability density probability is sin square dx this is how we calculate the probability and we have already seen this in just a time before as psi star psi and we have already seen this uh, when we analyzed our wave functions in our previous video that probability probability is calculated as integral 0 to L and 0 and L are the limits of this potential well inside which the particle is found. The so integral 0 to L psi square dx. When this function integral 0 to L mod psi square dx is equal to 1, it just means that the particle is fully contained inside this well. And if this probability is something less than 1, which means that the particle is not completely inside, it moves outside also. It's a wave function, it's spread outside. So in this case, we know that the wave function is not spread outside because what we have is an infinite square well potential. And there is zero possibility for the particle to move outside this potential well. That is, the particle is completely confined inside this well therefore the probability from 0 to L psi square dx is equal to 1. These are our uh, energy levels and this is how the wave function behaves and this plot here shows the probability the probability of finding a particle. This function shows uh, the psi the distribution of psi with energy levels and this function here this shows the probability this shows the probability of how a particle can be found inside a wave function so what does this graph tells us this is a ground state right at ground state we have a function here we have a peak over here this is the region which peaks so this is the probability and this is how it is in the problem uh, in energy level n is equal to 1 it peaks over here what does it mean it means that it have the highest possibility when x was equal to l by 2 that is at ground state the probability of finding a particle will be at the center of the well. This means that when the particle has a ground state energy, then probability of finding the particle inside the well will be exactly at the center of the well. This is what this graph tells us. Therefore, at ground state, 
probability of finding a particle is high at x is equal to L by 2. Similarly, at n is equal to 2, we can the most probable states of finding the particles are here and here. There are two uh, points at which there has an equal probability of finding a particle and the points of finding a particle uh, will increase as the wave function moves on and uh, towards uh, higher wave energy that is n is equal to 6 or n is equal to 12 uh, what we have here will be that the uh, function this function here will become crowded and the probability of finding the particle will be same all over the well the probability of finding the particle will be same throughout the well and this turns out into a classical behavior this is a classical behavior when we put a ball in a box then the probability of finding that ball inside the box is equal all over that box but it's in case of quantum mechanics when the uh, particle is just in the ground state the probability of finding us at the middle and the probability of finding shifts so as the uh, energy levels increases the particle behavior become more and more like a classical behavior classical system now let us learn about how do a particle behaves in a three-dimensional potential well so far we have learned how do a particle behave in a one-dimensional potential well that is a particle was just put in a one-dimensional well now let us put this particle in a three-dimensional potential well that will be probably a box therefore what we have here is a box with potential is equal to zero and outside everywhere in every direction the potential is infinite this is our three-dimensional potential box that is we have a box with a potential is equal to zero and everywhere in its neighborhood in every direction we have a potential infinity that is when a particle is trapped inside this box it has zero possibility to go out of this box but the particle can move inside this box in three directions the, it is okay for the particle to move inside this box in three directions but it cannot move out of the box now let's analyze the Schrodinger wave equation to see how the particle behaves so the Schrodinger's wave equation here does square psi 2me by h cross square psi is equal to 0 because v is equal to 0 now the del square has its all three components because uh, the particle can move in all three directions therefore we can rewrite this equation as in three dimension dou square psi by dou x square plus dou square psi by dou y square plus dou square psi by dou z square plus 2me by h cross square psi is equal to zero we already know that in one dimension the wave function the Aiken function of the Hamiltonian was psi is equal to is equal to root over 2 by L that is 2 by L raised to half right root over 2 by L can be written as 2 by L raised to half sine n pi x by L so here we uh, have three wave functions three wave functions that is psi x psi y and psi z so we are going to multiply these three wave functions so uh, the constant 2 by l uh, root over 2 by l into root over 2 by l into root over 2 by l what will it get it will be 2 by l the whole raised to 3 by 2 and all our functions sin n pi x by l into sin n y uh, uh, pi x by l and sin n is it sorry n y pi y by l and sin n is at pi z by l this is a wave function 
of a particle which is trapped inside a three dimensional infinite potential well so we have seen that the energy uh, that the wave function is of this form if wave function is of this form then the energy eigenvalue the eigen function we have already seen the eigen function eigen function is a combination of three different size psi x psi y and psi z so energy eigen value e should also be a combination of all this so what is our already existing energy eigen value for a one dimensional potential well for a one dimensional potential well the energy function was equal to n square pi square h cross square divided by 2 m l square right therefore this was for one dimensional potential well in three dimensional potential well we have three ends right we have n x n y and n z see we have n x n y and n z that is the possibility of the particle can have energy levels in three di uh, different directions so we have to account for all those energy levels and we can write this equation will become nx square plus ny square plus n z square into pi square h cross square divided by 2 m l square because l was same for all those uh, uh, the uh, box was a cubic box therefore at x region and y region and z region the length of the box was l therefore it will be equal to n x square plus n y square plus n z square into these values that is pi square h cross square divided by 2 m l square now let us see what will happen when uh, n x is equal to 1 n y equal to 1 and n z equal to 1 this will be our ground state right at ground state all these uh, n x n y and n z will have the same value so the energy here will become 3 into for a uh, ground state for energy e 1 1 1 that is a ground state this will become 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 3 into our ground state energy e so this is our energy at the ground state at the ground state uh, the energy is 3 uh, e 1 again at the excited state at excited state any of this member any of this uh, number can go to 2 so if any of this number go to 2 say nx will go to 2 then the value will become 2 square that is 4 plus 1 plus 1 that is 6 into e1 so energy is 6 into e1 but here we have three possibilities either n x can go to 1 or n y can go to 1 or n z can go to 1 therefore there are three different possibilities and we say this level this level uh, 6 e1 is three fold degenerate so what is degeneracy degeneracy is a number of energy levels found inside one particular energy level at the ground energy level the uh, energy level was just 1 and that was specified by 1 1 1 but in the first excited state there are three possibilities of getting the same energy 6e1 therefore it is three fold degenerate now let us look into the next second excited energy level that is 9e1 in that case one more guy can go to 2 so either 
एन वाई एंड एन इज कैन गो टू टू और एन एक्स एंड एन इज कैन गो टू टू और एन एक्स एंड एन वाई कैन गो टू टू सो हियर ऑल्सो वी हैव थ्री पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ अटेनिंग द सेम एनर्जी देर फो दिस एनर्जी लेवल नाइन ई वन इज ऑल्सो थ्री फोल्ड डी जेनरेट अगेन इन द केस ऑफ इलेवन ई वन इट इज थ्री फोल्ड डी जेनरेट इन द केस ऑफ ट्वेल्व ई वन दैट इज टू 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 दैट इज ऑल थ्री आर इक्वल टू टू एंड नो मोर मिक्सिंग इज पॉसिबल दे फोर द एनर्जी लेवल ट्वेल्व ई वन इज नॉन डी जेनरेट नाउ लुक इन टू द एनर्जी लेवल फोर्टीन ई वन द फोर्टीन ई वन इज अपटेन्ड वेन वन गोज टू वन इज एट द ग्राउंड स्टेट द सेकेंड इज एट द एक्साइटेड स्टेट एंड द थर्ड इज एट द सेकेंड एक्साइटेड स्टेट सो लेट से एन एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन एन वाई इज इक्वल टू टू एंड एन इज एट इज इक्वल टू थ्री इन दिस केस वॉट विल हैपन वन स्क्वायर वन प्लस टू स्क्वायर फोर प्लस थ्री स्क्वायर नाइन दैट विल बी वन प्लस फोर प्लस नाइन दैट इज फोर्टीन सो एट फोर्टीन एनर्जी लेवल वी कैन हैव एदर वन एन एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन एन वाई इज इक्वल टू टू एंड एन इज एड इक्वल टू थ्री एंड हियर वी हैव सिक्स कॉम्बिनेशंस ऑफ अटेनिंग द सेम एनर्जी लेवल्स दे फोर द एनर्जी लेवल फोर्टीन ई वन इज सिक्स फोल्ड डी जेनरेट that is when we plot our energy this is a ground state e1 it is a non degenerate it has only one energy level a next energy level 6 e1 is three fold degenerate a next energy level 9 e1 is three fold degenerate 11 e1 is three fold degenerate and 12 e1 is non degenerate it has only one energy level and the 14 e1 is six fold degenerate so hope you understood what a degeneracy is so there can be levels which are degenerate and non degenerate in a one dimensional potential well this degeneracy was not possible because we had only one n value so a one dimensional potential well the energy levels are non degenerate i repeat in a one dimensional potential well all the energy levels are non degenerate because we don't have a combination of ends over here but in a three dimensional potential well yes we have degeneracy in different energy levels it have non degenerate levels only for 1 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 3 etc at all other states has degeneracy so dear student we have completed our portion this is what we have learned in this entire chapter in this entire chapter we have learned the inadequacy of quantum mechanics about black body radiation about wave function the schrodinger's time independent and time dependent wave equation and also about particle in a box so by this we are winding up a portion uh, good learning see you in the next class uh, thank you